for a model to really be independent and financially secure, mm -hmm. you've got to get endorsement deals, right? Yes. And your first endorsement deal was a cosmetics thing, right? Yes. It was uh, Revlon. Revlon. Mm -hmm. That's huge money, right? Mm -hmm. Before Revlon, you're a working model. Right. You're just like a, it's like a day player. You wait for the phone to ring and, you know, my phone was ringing a lot, but it could end tomorrow or the next week. You, you don't have any security. Do you, I, when you're, when your look is the thing, do you worry about your face? Can you go out and live a normal life at that point where you say, you know what, I'm going to go play softball with my friends or, oh my God, what if I get hit with a bat? Do you become paranoid about your face? That's funny. I never really thought about it, but... I will say, like, if you're playing ball or something with your kids, I do definitely do the face block <laughs> if anything's coming my way. I mean, because it, it, it's who you are. I mean, it, it, yeah. it, you get so much attention on your face, not only because you're beautiful, but then, and then people evaluate the mm -hmm. face. Oh, look at this. Look at the mole. Look at that. There was, when you first went into modeling, I don't know how old you were, uh, but where the discussion was, should she remove the mole? Your mm -hmm. mother says, don't remove the mole because it'll scar your face. Right. And so the mole stays on. But these photographers, through the miracle of photography, start removing them all. Yes, or trying to cover it with makeup, which was even a disaster. But It might have gone on as a most brilliant decision in modeling to leave the mole. <laughs> Because I've seen the pictures without the mole. It's not the same, is it? No, it, it's weird. It's like somehow it punctuates my face. But also I think um, women who had little beauty marks all over, because my sisters had this thing where if it's on the right side, it's a beauty mark. Right. But mine's on the left side. That's an ugly mark. <laughs> and so, um, but anyway, a lot of women have beauty marks or moles or ugly marks, whatever you want to call them. And I think so many women, because they saw it on the cover of Vogue on me, all of a sudden they felt less self-conscious of their own. The cover of Vogue is the most important, right? Once you yes. get on there, then you're a quote unquote supermodel. Yeah, certainly for my generation. I mean, now there's a lot more avenues just because of social media and all that. But And it is even weird that in Vogue, you can be nude and it's considered art. And then when you take those same pictures and put yes. them in Playboy, it's considered pornography. Yeah. And that's probably the hypocrisy of it. And you probably said to yourself, well, why be hypocritical? I've posed nude. Yeah, I don't know why. I just, I don't know what made, gave me the confidence at that age to say yes, but having the safety net there that I could say no even after shooting it. And I really trusted Herb. And I don't know, I guess I just trusted that we could do beautiful pictures, but it was, everyone thought you'll never get a cosmetic contract. And meanwhile, Having done Playboy, open the world of um, MTV came calling because they house they, of uh, style house of style because they had guys as their audience, so they wanted someone in fashion, but that also appealed to guys. And I had just done Playboy and Vogue within like the same six month period. What's so weird to me with your career is you did House of Style, and it's funny that because MTV was so big at that point, mm -hmm. and yeah. you get House of Style. And you don't even know who Led Zeppelin is. You're not no. like this huge rock fan. I you, thought Led Zeppelin was a person. Mr. Led Zeppelin. Yeah, I was right. like, which one is he? <laughs> like like Muddy Waters or Lead Belly. Yeah. It's Led Zeppelin. Yeah. So well, it's I mean, Iggy Pop. I mean, there are, I mean, there are, it's understandable, but I should have known. When you were modeling, were, were you, I get the feeling you somehow, like Beverly talks about her life became Studio 54. She had three lost days. She mm -hmm. got into Coke. She got, oh. you know. You were never really part of that scene, were you? No. You weren't friends with Andy Warhol no. and that whole crowd. No, that was like the, the Studio 54 was just the generation before me. But you could have easily gotten sucked into the rock star world. I mean, I'm sure people tried to get you, you know, to, to join their little <laughs> hip group, right? I mean, you know, I was around a lot of that, but I also think if you're not looking for it, it doesn't really find you or, or it was going on literally, but I just wasn't aware of it.